Today we'll go through what ashwagandha is and after looking through the research, why I've decided to take it. Now let's go through some of the claimed benefits. So apparently it reduces blood sugar levels, it's got anti-cancer properties, it reduces cortisol levels, reduces stress and anxiety, reduces symptoms of depression, it boosts testosterone, and it increases muscle mass and strength. You get the idea. So when I started going through the research around ashwagandha, I was very skeptical and expecting to write it off quickly. But that's not what I found. The more that I went digging, the more excited I became. So let's go through it. So what actually is ashwagandha? Well, it's from a small shrub that's prolifically grown in dry regions of South Asia, Central Asia, and Africa. And it's regularly used in Ayurveda, which is an ancient Hindu system of medicine that dates back over 3,000 years. And within ashwagandha, there's over 50 different chemical compounds. Okay, so how does it work? What is it actually doing to our body? Because before we take any molecule, we need to figure that out. We need to make sure that it's not going to have any other reactions with our body. So with regards to its therapeutic mechanisms, it strongly inhibits COX-2 enzymes, which overall reduces the levels of systemic inflammation. So overall, an anti-inflammatory. But it's also been found to increase the expression of brain-derived neurotrophic factor. And it's this one that we really need to pay close attention to. So brain-derived neurotrophic factor, it enhances neurons, and it's postulated to have a central role in neurogenesis, so creating new neurons. And it also helps in neuronal survival and neuroplasticity. So overall, it's good for brain health. And those are the two main mechanisms of how it's thought that ashwagandha can help us. It's a COX-2 inhibitor, and it helps with brain-derived neurotrophic factor. Now, a lot of molecules, they've got some presumed ways that they may help us. But often in the research, that's not what seems to happen. Either they're not absorbed properly, or they don't have the effect that we thought that they would. So is it the same with ashwagandha? What happens in clinical research? So let's start with brain health. A total of five clinical studies were reviewed, and it was looking at things like mild cognitive impairment, adults with schizophrenia or schizoaffective disorder. And what this analysis found was that ashwagandha supplementation, it improved performance on cognitive tasks and appeared to be well tolerated with good adherence and minimal side effects. And in terms of study quality, most trials were randomized, placebo controlled and double blind with generally low risk of bias. So this was the first analysis that really made me sit up and start taking ashwagandha seriously. We've got randomized, placebo-controlled trials that look like ashwagandha can genuinely help. So I kept digging and I looked at anxiety. And yes, there is another randomized, placebo-controlled, double-blind study that ran for eight weeks. And overall, there was a significant reduction in the perceived stress scale that was observed with ashwagandha at 250 milligrams per day and an even greater effect at 600 milligrams a day. And that point is very key. What we like to see when we're looking at molecules is a dose response curve. So if we take a little bit of that molecule, we're going to get a little effect. And if we take more of that molecule, we're going to get a greater effect. And that's exactly what we see with ashwagandha. So it does look like this is real. And when we have a closer look at how ashwagandha is helping with anxiety, what we can see is that the cortisol levels are reduced with ashwagandha supplementation. So cortisol, it's a stress hormone that naturally goes up in the morning and decreases at night. So we don't want to have too much cortisol in our blood. We also want to make sure that the cortisol levels are fairly low at night because if our cortisol is too high, we're going to struggle with sleep. So overall, if ashwagandha is decreasing our cortisol levels, let's have a look and see what that does to sleep. And lo and behold, we can see that ashwagandha has significant improvements in sleep quality. And once again, we've got good data showing this. So we've got a 12-week randomized double-blind placebo-controlled study that shows that there's a significant increase in the quality of sleep and mental alertness, which was observed in the ashwagandha treatment group when compared to placebo. Often when I have a look at new molecules, the evidence base is very weak. There's some sketchy studies out there that may suggest a benefit. But with ashwagandha, this isn't the case. There does seem to be some high quality data that's coming through that is showing positive effects of ashwagandha. Now, yes, these aren't long term effects. We need to figure out what does ashwagandha do for the long term. But the initial data, it looks exciting. So let's continue. Not only does ashwagandha seem to help with the overall quality of sleep, 
but it also helps with the sleep onset latency, as in it makes us fall asleep quicker. So with ashwagandha, the sleep onset latency was significantly shorter after 10 weeks when compared with placebo. So we've gone through the hormone cortisol and its effect on anxiety and sleep. So what other hormones does ashwagandha affect? We can see that there's an 18% greater increase in DHEA and a 14.7% increase in testosterone when compared to placebo. And on the point of testosterone, it's increased in males, but not in females. So it seems that ashwagandha does have a significant effect on our hormone levels in our blood. And it's thought to do this through the hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis activity. So lots of jargon, but I bring that to your attention to show that ashwagandha, it does have a presumed mechanism for how it affects our hormones. And since it appears that ashwagandha affects our hormones, what does that do to our performance? Well, in an eight-week, randomized, double-blind, placebo-controlled study, 57 young male subjects with little experience in resistance training found that when compared to placebo subjects, the group treated with ashwagandha had significantly greater increases in muscle strength on the bench press exercise as well as a lot of other different exercises. So again, it's very difficult not to get excited about ashwagandha. Now this is a longevity channel, so what does ashwagandha do for our longevity? So when it was given to C. elegans, there was a 20% extension in lifespan. So yes, that is only a trial in worms, but the initial data, it does look good. Now there is some data around cancer, heart health and cholesterol, but overall I found that those trials were a little bit sketchy. I couldn't find good quality, randomized placebo controlled trials. But overall, yes, there is a mechanism for how ashwagandha can help in all three of those. But this review wouldn't be complete without having a look at the potential side effects of ashwagandha. And in these randomized placebo controlled trials, it does look like that ashwagandha, it was well tolerated with minimal side effects. But once again, these are short term studies. At the most, they were around 12 weeks. So we don't know what ashwagandha is going to do in the long term. What's going to happen if you're taking it for 10, 20, 40 years? We just don't know. So we do need to keep that in the forefront of our minds when considering to take ashwagandha. The other thing we need to go through is the dose. So in these trials, it was using around 250 milligrams to 600 milligrams. So for me, I certainly wouldn't go over 600 milligrams because we don't have the long-term data yet. But overall, when we weigh up the risks versus the benefits, there aren't many risks and there's potentially a lot of benefit. So that's why I've elected to take ashwagandha. And I'm going to start with 300 milligrams once a day from the brand called Nootropics. Now I've chosen Nootropics because it's third party tested to make sure that it's pure. And since ashwagandha has got a potential mechanism to help with sleep and that seems to bear fruit in the research, I'm going to start taking ashwagandha at night. But I didn't take this decision lightly. Already my supplement stack, it's pretty long. So I didn't want to add another supplement that's got sketchy evidence. But overall, looking at all of this, we've got randomized placebo controlled trials that do seem to suggest a genuine benefit. Now again, yes, it's not long term studies, but initially it does look promising. So that's why I have elected to take ashwagandha. But I do want to see what I can cut down with my supplement stack. But on the other hand, all of the existing supplements that I currently take, they've got a reasonable evidence base behind them. So yes, again, they're not long term studies, but the initial studies, they do look promising. 